In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use Google Sheets as a sort of database for the output of our Python web scrapers. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is John and the library we're going to be using is called Gspread. So let's jump straight in. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to configure our uh, Google account a little bit. So you need to log into your Google account, come over to console.developers.google.com and click create new projects. You'll be presented with this screen. Uh, and we can go ahead and create a project. I'm going to call this one um, Gspread uh, Scraper, I'll save it like that, and then hit Create. That's going to go ahead and create the project for us. And once that's done, we have to enable two of the APIs on our project before we can go anywhere. So let's go up here, and then we need to uh, go to the Drive API, Google Drive API. Uh, we select our project and hit Enable. And then we go to exactly the same for the Sheets API. So once those two are both done, we go to Credentials and we come down to Create Credentials and we're going to use Service Account. Give it a name. I'm just going to call it uh, Gspread Scraper and then hit Create. Uh, I'm going to hit Continue and then I'm going to hit Done. Once that's done, it pops up down here. We can click on this little pen and we can go to add key, create new key, and JSON is the right format. Click create, and that is going to give you a JSON file to download and save. Uh, it's important that we then put this file in the same folder as our um, script that we're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy mine across now, and I'm gonna put it into the folder that I'm working in, in VS Code. I'm also going to rename it, and I'm just going to call it creds.json, and inside here, there is a client email. This is important, we need to copy this, and now we go over to Google Sheets, and create a new sheet. We give it a name to, to save it, and I'm going to call this scrape to sheets. Hit enter, it's saved, then come over to share, Add in the account, the email address we just got, untick notify, and then hit share. Now that's all the steps that we need to do. So now we can use Gspread in our code to actually manipulate this spreadsheet. So I'm gonna work through a quick uh, example for you so we can just see how it works a little bit. So the first thing we want to do is import Gspread. And if you haven't got this installed, do a pip install. And then we want to do GC is equal to gspread.service account and within here we put file name is equal to and it's our creds.json file and then we can do sh is equal to gc.open and we're going to go and say the spreadsheet that we just created which i've already forgotten why i called it i called it scrape to sheets so we put that in here this is the name that you have your of your sheet that you've got you called Scrape to sheets. And now I'm just going to put sheet one at the end of this. So we're going for sheet one, which is sheet one, which is down here. So if you had multiple sheets, you could call them up like that. I'm going to go for sheet one because that is the one that's there. And now I'm going to save that and I'm just going to run it and hopefully we get absolutely no errors. Perfect. So that means we've connected fine. So there's a couple of ways that you can then update the spreadsheet. Um, the, the first one is to do update. So we will just do uh, sh.update and then we would put in the uh, cell that we want to update so we'll put a1 and then we put in the information that we want to update it into so I'll just put uh, uh, test update we save that we run it no errors we come over to our spreadsheet and we can see that we have test update put into the cell a1 so that's all very well. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that out of the sheet just like this. So what if we wanted to update a whole row? That's more likely what we're going to have, right? We're going to have uh, a set of data and it's going to be the first thing, the second thing, the third thing, and the fourth thing. And that's going to be our row on our spreadsheet. Well, to do that, we can do sh.append row. Now what that'll do is it will take a list and it will append that data in a line in the row. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll put it into a list and we'll just do first second, third. So we'll save and run. And if we go to our sheet, we get first, second, and third. 
So where this is becomes useful is that every time we append a row, it adds it to the row below. If you think of a practical example for this, maybe we were scraping some data that was specific. Uh, maybe it was a date uh, or a price or something like that. It would We could get it to go, set it on a cron job, and we could run it every time, and it would append it to the next row down. Now, I think there is a limit on the sheet, the number of rows on a sheet, uh, which I think is a 1,000. Um, but if you run it something every day to collect one piece of data, then that's three and a bit years, so it's plenty of space. So I'm going to show you now a practical, a more practical example of this. Um, over here, I've got open a basic web scraper. Now what this does is we are using requests in Beautiful Soup and we are going out and we are getting the data of this product um, from this website. So we're doing our request, we're returning it, um, and we are then using the date time to get a date. We're getting the name, the price, whether the item is in stock, and then we are creating a dictionary with that information like we would in most of our other web scrapers. So if I run this, you'll see what comes back. So here we have our date time object, the name of the product, the price, and whether it's in stock. So we could then set this script to run every day, get that price information and create ourselves a nice little data set of maybe price variations for an item. And we could work out the average or the medium or the mean or anything like that. Now to get this to update into our uh, spreadsheet, I'm going to first go back to our spreadsheet and I'm going to put in the column headers manually just because it's easier. So we have date, um, item, price and stock. So I'm just going to put those in real quick. Date, item, price and stock just so it's easy, easier for us to work with like that. Let's make this a bit bigger. So we need to take what we've got here uh, and we need to apply it to this. So we need to import gspread, which I've got here. And then we need to create ourselves a new function. Sort of our web takers have uh, three main functions. We have the request and pass and the output. So this is one we're going to be using as the output. It's also known as extract, transform and load. So I might refer to it as either one of those interchangeably. So let's create our output. So let's say output. So normally what we might do is we might export this data to CSV, but in this case, we are going to output it to our spreadsheet. So we need to take in a variable here because we want to take that information that we've just scraped and put it into our spreadsheet. So we're gonna to have to take product. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to do what we did here and we're gonna to connect to our spreadsheet. So I'm actually gonna just copy this and paste this in here. So we are connecting with our service account, which is our creds.json. Now this is the um, file that we downloaded from our Google account, and this is saved in the same directory as this Py file. So that's why we can call it just like this. And I'm gonna be on sheet one again. So now we're just going to use the append row on our sheet to put in this product data. Now, because we're returning the products as a dictionary, we would want to do sh.append row like we did before. Append row. And we need to then put it into a list and because it's a dictionary that we've got stored in our product variable, we do product and then call the key of name. Uh, sorry, the first one was uh, date and it should be like this because we're using a dictionary. And then the next one was name, product and name. Then it was product, uh, price, And the final one was product stock, like this. And then we can return our function. So if we run this now, we should have no errors, but we should just get our information back. Okay, that's great. And now we can put into output and we can say product. Great. Um, I'm going to remove the print statement for now, and I'm just going to leave it like that. So now if I run this, this, this line that we get back should be put into our spreadsheet, except we have got an error. Um, and that's because we're trying to input the wrong sort of format. So the easiest way to get around that 
is that when we call this, it's just to call this as, as a string. Because we're trying to put a date object in, we're going to call it, and we're going to turn that into a string, and we're going to put the string into our, into our uh, spreadsheet. I'm actually going to do this on all of these as well, just so our data is more sanitized, because if we come back up and have a look, um, we've got some forwards, forward slashes, etc., in the name of the product. And for the price, because it comes in as a float value, I'm going to turn that into a float value that we put in as well. So we turn that to a float. And stock I'll turn into a string. Okay, now we'll run that. And we have no errors back, so we go to our spreadsheet. And we can see here that we have got a date, the item, the price, and whether it is in stock. Uh, the easiest way I find to format this is just to do this in the um, actual spread document itself. And uh, we go number and we go date, and then we go turn it into a nice, more human readable date format, but that information is all in there. So what we would want to do is we would want to run this script maybe on a couple of different products, or maybe more than that, and update the spreadsheet every day. And what we could then do is we could create a function that looks at the average price, and if the price is lower, or maybe if the price has gone down since the last time, we could then have some kind of trigger. So you could monitor price products for something that maybe you're interested in buying, and you could see whether it's on sale or not somewhere, or you could put in, uh, you could scrape three or four different sites for the same product. Say we say this was something else that we were interested in, but it, we could buy it in from Amazon or from wherever or wherever. You could go out and you could get that information every day, and you could put in another column which told you where it was from and then you could compare all the prices. So it's quite a nice, cool way to hold the data um, that you get as somewhere it isn't just a CSV. And also Google Sheets is nice and easy to share with your friends and your colleagues as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run this a couple more times so we get a few more lines so you see it going in. Okay, so I ran it four more times and we can see that it puts the date underneath. Uh, it puts the information at each line underneath um, and I didn't format the whole thing obviously and it puts all the information there. So it'll create a new line for every time. So that's it guys, hopefully you found this useful. It's quite a nice and easy way and it could be useful to you guys that are doing any of the things I talked about just now. So uh, let me know if you've done this before, if you've used this in any of your projects or if this is new to you and thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe for more web scraping content. Uh, there's plenty on my channel already and there is more to come. I'm also gonna start doing a live stream every week, probably on a Thursday. Uh, but you'll see the notifications come up uh, if you're subscribed. Cheers, guys. Bye.